and we're going to trigger once. Then we're going to trigger twice. Then we're going to hit the slaying fire. And then we're going to hit the stomp. And before he even has a chance, we just shut that down. We just shut that down. We just turn that off. We just go ahead and turn that off. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I am your host, as always, Jay Villain, a.k.a. That Villain Jay. Tonight, we have a very special treat for you. Uh, we are doing Big Red Giants. Um, why are we doing Big Red Giants if we did Giants last week? Well, um, I like Is It Giants. I like Is It Giants. I'm not going to lie. Um, but... But there's a making it is it. There's a few things you have to cut out of the red deck. So one of my favorite decks that I made, a classic, is Inferno right here. If you want to check it out, it's a six win run. I think I was in Diamond. I can't remember. It was a while ago. Absolutely smoked people in the old meta before Kaldheim came out. A giant deck, super aggressive, super powerful, super dangerous, just throwing around damage like crazy. Um, absolutely smashing people very very fun deck didn't gain too much traction people didn't like it even though it was very powerful so i said you know what i'm going to try to recreate the magic of inferno with big red wins uh it is a mid-range red deck i know heresy right why isn't it an aggro red well mid-range red is a little bit different uh, beast here so let's take a look at this Still can throw around the damage. Still can throw the fire around like you, like you wouldn't believe. So let's take a look. Uh, before, of course, we get started, I will, again, as I always do, ask you to tenderly hit that like button. Gently hit that subscribe button. Uh, not only will this give the subscribe button a break from being smashed all the time, but uh, the like and subscribe will not come after you. He's hungry this time of year. Uh, so you got to watch out for him. The only way to, is, is to like and subscribe. Of course, you can always join us on our Twitch at twitch.tv slash thatvillainj. Join the rest of the villains in the live stream. Hang out in the chat. And if you just can't get enough villainy in your life, please check out our Discord where we would love to have you and uh, take on some challengers from the villains crew. So aside from that, all. We have big red wins. Uh, what are we starting out with? Shock. What do I say about shock? Uh, six words, one number, two damage. Don't need to say anything more than that. Uh, why are you doing shock and not uh, something like frostbite? I oftentimes want to go face. So frostbite is not really right for me right now. Fire Giant's Fury. This is an insanely powerful card if you can get it off. It's a little expensive and it's a sorcery, not an instant, so you kind of have to know that you're going in. However, I have done a massive amount of damage uh, with this and it just absolutely loads your hand up with cards to play. Um, so it gets trample and uh, extra damage and that extra damage that goes over, you get that many cards to load up on to absolutely throw at the enemy. Very useful. I might actually add more of him. I don't know yet. We'll see. Fire Prophecy, three damage to a creature. We also get uh, we also get a ability to throw away the cards we don't need, which is very useful. We don't throw them in the graveyard too. We put them at the bottom of our library, which is very helpful. A non-giant, but a god, Bergy, god of storytelling. I like her more than I like. Uh, Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. Now, Harnfell can be useful late in the game if you're just exiling cards off the top of your library, if you just want to get spells to absolutely nuke people with. Uh, but I prefer her as the god because whenever you cast a spell, add red, it doesn't, until the end of your turn, you don't lose this mana. And creatures you control can bo boast twice rather uh, than once. I don't really care about the boasting. I'm here for the extra mana, which basically means that your shocks are free your fire giants 
uh, Fury are only one. It basically reduces the mana cost of all your red spells by one. Uh, because it's going to keep adding mana. And you can get this nice chain where I cast Shock, I gain one red. Then I cast Fire Giant's Fury, and I gain one red. And you can kind of cascade them down. You can kind of pay that mana forward. So it's it's kind of a sneaky way of adding a little bit of red ramp in. So that's why we have her in here. Uh, Bone Crusher, I mean, come on. If you don't know what this card is yet, you haven't been playing any kind of Gruul. Gruul Adventure, he's always there. Two damage, can't be prevented for the instant. And of course, a 4-3, and whenever it becomes the target of a spell, two damage to that spell's controller. Very useful card overall. Crush the Weak. This is a new one that I haven't been playing yet, but I like it. Uh, I had, cat I had, um, it is a new one. Uh, Crush the Weak is a, a new kind of board wipe. Two damage to each creature. If damage dealt this way, um, if they would die, exile them, which is very useful for a lot of the necromancy decks that are going around, um, for a lot of things that are being able to resurrect things. Um, I also like to pair it with Bone Crusher, uh, Giant with Stomp, which means damage can't be prevented, and then you hit a big board wipe with it. Um, that is very useful. Um, so, obviously... If damage can't be prevented and everybody gets two and they all get exiled, boom. We're usually big enough to avoid that two damage. The other uh, the other card that I replaced it, I used to run Cinderclasm. I wrote Cider. I used to run Cinderclasm. This was a little cheaper but had a kicker for two. This is foretold, so it's just the mana set up in a different way. You can foretell it and then have it loaded up with one red mana. Shatterskull Charger, a little aggressive guy here. He's our cheap one drop, 4-3, kicker haste. I mean, Trample Haste with the kicker to boost him out there. Um, he is a very useful guy to really put the aggression and the pressure down on him, and he is a giant too. Uh, you can keep him on the board, but um, uh, hey, why why keep him on the board if you can uh, take it easy with him? Where am I? Oh, I lost my place. Slang Fire. I love Slang Fire. Four damage for three mana. That is cost efficiency there. Um, adamant, it's always going to be adamant, and it can go to any target, it can go face. I have one game because of Slaying Fire. When you need to get that last little damage off on people, Slaying Fire is the one to do the trick. Uh, very, very much so, and that's why I have three of them. Valakut Exploration is another kind of sneaky red ramp thing. Whenever you play a, um, a land card... You can look at the next card of your top, top library at the beginning of your end step. If these cards are exiled, put them in the owner's graveyard and it deals that many damage to each opponent. So uh, if you start land falling a lot of cards, you can get that built up. I've kind of nerfed that mechanic. I used to use it a lot where I was trying to get as many cards out as possible and really do a lot of damage with the Valakut. Right now I'm just using it to kind of top deck more things to get the variety out, to get the cycle of the deck going. So that is part of the game now is trying to beat the auto shuffler at its own game. So this will help do that. Calamity Bearer. Um, another card that you might want to consider going three on. Giant Source would deal damage to a permanent or player. It deals double damage. Whew, that's a lot of damage. So you got to remember, if you're putting out Shatter Skull Charger, he's got Trample and Haste. Um, hey, if you want to put a Fire Giant's Fury on him, he is going wide with 6 damage. That's 12 damage. He's trampling. Anything he tramples with over, you're going to get to draw that many cards. ba 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 ba, ba. We start getting um, We start getting really out of control with it. Um, so very, very interesting combos we can pull off. Storm's Wrath. Now here's the big boy wipe. Um, the big boy wipe is for when we just, they just have way too much board state and we got to put everything down. This will kill our stuff too. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it's better to start over than, uh, deal with it. So I also like to save board state because we are kind of a mid range, higher level deck. Keep the cards in your hand. Let the other opponent play board state, save your high boys, save your big boys, burn up what you can hit him with um storm's wrath and then start playing your big boy so that's a good idea tectonic giant i've only got three of him even though i like him a lot he does three damage to each opponent whenever he attacks or becomes the target of a spell which is very nice when paired with calamity bearer um because he's going to do six damage uh or you can exile the top two cards and to the end of your turn you may play that card so even if he gets locked out even if he gets uh, pacified or removed 
or exiled anytime he's a targeted spell he's going to give you that ability to do damage or get some more cards out so he's going to help you no matter what and the amount of removal we have going on right now it certainly helps torbrand uh you can run two of them you can run one of them i like getting that extra two damage out uh it deals that much damage plus two so that means if you're starting to chain things here if you're starting to really start building up these chains uh two damage of any red source storm's wrath is going to do six to everybody which will pretty much wipe just about anything but the craziest creatures out valakut exploration is going to start doing three every time you put down a card and tectonic giant's going to do five on an attack with calamity bear things are going to go out of control because it's going to double then add two so it's going to do eight when you attack uh very very big damage here quake bringer another thing if you have torbrand quake bringer is going to do four opponents can't gain life i have won games by not letting opponents win uh gain life absolutely i have two damage if it's on the board or in the graveyard very useful and it can be foretold for a little bit cheaper and of course squash six damage is a lot of damage if you have a giant on the board for two uh and to a planeswalker that can even take out an ugin uh it can certainly help you out and also that giant has a really gross fingernail and of course the pièce de résistance is fiery emancipation if a source you control deals damage to a permanent it, it deals triple damage so now we're talking about crazy things here now we're talking about double times triple plus two damage we're talking about doing 30 40 50 damage with attacks uh we're talking about the exponential growth of explosive fire just throwing it everywhere um, it is expensive. It is an end game thing. But when I talk about that, Slang Fire has won me games. I've gotten board wiped. I've gotten killed. I've had them in a win state. They've been absolutely going to kill me next round. Guess what? Fire Emancipation is out. Uh, I play it. They wipe everything. They're going to go in. They've got everything loaded up, loaded at me. I hit them with Slang Fire. That's 12 damage. Um, and that's three mana for 12 damage. Hit them with Slang Fire. Hit them with a shock. That's 12. That's six that's 18 uh you can really start throwing some pipe some some power around with that we do have two shatter skull smashings mana is to taste you don't need them i just want this a little extra damage just in case i need it uh for an end game situation uh we're using snow covered mountains um just for fun i don't even think i have anything snow in here that i need them for uh but just for fun we're using them and of course some fabled passages so we can double trigger valakut on an occasion if we want to if we look at this on the big board we are running 3.3 average uh, a little expensive a little slow not that many creatures plenty of burn spells the main strategy of this deck is to burn everybody up before they can get any kind of board state built and then put down your board state with heavy damage uh, so that's the idea anyway so this is what it looks like we're really running at three four is the big boys and of course quake squash is never going to cost that much quake bringers the finisher um so that's what we're looking at here all right let's see if we can't get into a good game all right guys let's see if we can't do it how's everybody doing tonight by the way good I hope everybody's doing good. Okay. I'm honestly not mad at this hand. Because like I said, um, we kind of want to build board. We kind of want to deny board state to them before we go wide. Uh, so I have no problem waiting for the cards that I need just by burning up everything else they have. And then putting down my uh, selection of things that I want. So he went tapped first, which is nice. He has a Mardu. Um, hopefully this is not a Tybalt. Dr. Candy Flip Strange. Very strange name. All right. My turn. Okay. So I'm just going to stay steady here. Um, we're usually going to try to burn up anything that comes out. Another. So he's getting... What is he getting? Is this a God's deck? Or is it just a true Mardu? might be might be a multicolor deck so we're gonna go brigid uh god of storytelling because anytime we cast a spell we're gonna get one we're gonna get f a one mana back so let's see what he does you kind of see oh, it's a it's a it's a uh 
It's a it's a shrine deck, guys. Can you even believe that? We're going to use that extra mana to go face. We might move a little too fast for him here. <clears throat> um, before he can get his shrine set up. Because we're going to do a massive amount of damage right now. Um, especially with that Brigid being what it is. We're going to throw, throw fire right now. There's for meaning. He's going to draw cards. I don't see that helping you, homeboy. I don't see that helping you. Uh, no more shrines out. Okay. All right, there's fire emancipation for, for later. Okay. So we're going to hit, hit. So you know what that did, guys? That added a red mana, which means that we have enough to play Slaying Fire again. And it's over with. So if you're playing somebody that's trying to build board state, um, they're not going to be able to shut them down. Uh, it's just that easy, guys. When I talk about Slaying Fire as one, one me gains, I'm not kidding. Slaying Fire is a very good spell. But just when I got four mana out, especially with Brigid, um, I was just able to push the push that temple so much with that little extra. I had six mana to play with. Um, they attack. They did nine, and then I finished off the nine with an extra 12. I mean... That's a lot of damage, as the man said. That was uh, 9 damage. 9 damage of 12 is 21. So we really hurt him. Um, when you're trying to go wide on, uh, on shrines, it's not, it's not going to look good. When you're, when you're slow building on shrines, that's why I said it was a bad idea that he went... Um, whoop. Unfortunately, we got locked out here. Um... He went for a draw. He went for drawing cards instead of putting down another shrine or doing something else. Um, hey, we'll see you, King Rez. I am having some connection issues right now, guys. Hmm. Hold on, everybody. All right, sorry about that, folks. We had some connection issues with the client. I don't know why, but let's see if we can't get another one in. There we go. And, of course, there's the cancel button that does nothing. You ever notice that, guys? That cancel button is purely cosmetic. That cancel button is like the, the closed door button in an elevator. It's just there to make you feel good. Um, <clears throat> so, advice. All right. Whoa, that is a weird, weird hand. It gave me all three... Look at that auto shuffler. What are you doing, man? Great hand if I actually got mountains instead of every single uh, fabled passage that I had. Um, that's going to slow me down way too much, even though this hand is beautiful. Um, So we're going to mulligan that. That's, that's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Um, I think Torbran is going to be the one going. I think Torbran is going to go for right now. We're going to play Fable Passage first. Samu, let's see what you got. Why am I running Fable Passages in Mono Red? Because I sometimes want to double trigger um, Valakut, um, Valakut Awakening. Valakut Exploration. Um, I usually don't have any first first, uh, first uh, hand plays, so it doesn't really matter if I play it. Okay, so he's going to be running a giant deck. So it's giant versus giant right now. There's Glimpse of the Cosmos. Very good card, by the way. Um, not to be confused with Behold the Multiverse, 
which sounds very similar to Glimpse of the Cosmos, but is not, in fact, Glimpse of the Cosmos. Glimpsing the Cosmos and beholding the multiverse are two very different things. Don't get them confused. Sometimes you glimpse the Cosmos, sometimes you behold the multiverse. It's not always both. Yeah, if I can double trigger, um, sometimes if I can double trigger Valakut and I have either Torbran or, um, I have Torbran or, uh, something like, uh, uh, Fire Emancipation out, um, I can, uh, do a, a lot of damage just by playing two mana, so it can be a closer it can really put you in a pole position so a couple of a couple of uh fable passages don't really hurt what did he show me he showed me crystalline so he's gonna play crystalline all right hopefully he's not gonna get hexproof okay he didn't get hexproof all right i'm gonna take two damage to do more damage He's really got to think about it right now. Nope. And I'm going to get a massive crap ton of cards. Yeah, if he's running, that's also the advantage of running a giant deck, is if you're running Battle of Frost and Fire, if you're coming against these is it giant decks, uh, they're not going to know what to deal with you, because their sweeper is not going to work on you. Your sweeper will work on them, however, their sweeper will not work on you, so uh, you do have the advantage there. He should not attack. Hopefully he is smart and does not attack, because he should not be doing that. Because I'm going to win if he attacks. Immediately, I'm going to win. I hope he attacks. I hope he just says, Ugh, as we got to press aggressive. Rules and regulations. Oh, there's Calamity Bear. Yeah, he's going to attack. He can't resist. He can't resist that damage. That sweet, sweet damage. He cannot resist it. Um, unfortunately for him, I'm able to do this. have a Calamity Bear in my hand, so if he attacks next turn, I'm going to do double damage. Um, or I can just do Shatter Skull, uh, which will push it over too. So unless he gets another blocker out, he's in trouble here. He might have another Calamity Bear and he can attack me and hit me for six, but even so, I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to work out for him. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'd like to get this win. And now he's just running out the clock. So what did he get? He got reach, which he doesn't need. Oh, he's going for it. Who are you going to play next, guy? You're going to play a defender. He's going to play a defender. He's not playing a defender. Come on, man. Don't do that. Don't make this easy for me. He's thinking about it. He's thinking, maybe if I play removal on Bone Crusher, I'll take the two damage, but he's not going to have anything out that can attack me this turn, and I'll be able to defend. No, he's going for it. Okay. Okay. Alright, 
questions now is do I bring out Calamity Bearer? Um, yes, I do. And I foretell him. So he's gonna have to lose that Crystalline. It's gonna have to happen. Otherwise he loses the game. Okay. So now he's got a question of what does he want to do with his current Crystalline. Um, okay, it's got Trample. He's going to go in. <clears throat> Once he's, he's not going to play anything. He's got a second main phase player here. Uh, Bone Crusher does two. Does he have another one? So you have another one and a second bone crusher okay so yeah he had two bone crushers built up but uh uh i did not go for it i could have gone for the um i could have gone for the the hasted attack uh but i don't think it would have mattered with two bone crushers built up i had no i had no way of stopping a flying creature uh that was just pure luck um, he was deeply, deeply in trouble. If he wasn't running those two giants, uh, if he just didn't have those two giants handy, he would have been uh, completely out of luck. And I did not get any face, um, direct face damage cards, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have thrown them at him. So that was just blind luck there, um, more than anything else, more than in, uh, a, a damning of that deck. I'm okay with this hand. Fire Prophecy into Valakut into these guys. Are you guys getting repeating sound? I don't hear I don't hear sound on repeat. Could just be a bad connection. We're going to force Quakebringer. Thieves Guild. Okay, so we're going to get rid of her right away. I'm not hearing any in my in my feedback here. Um, Luris Thieves Guild. So let's see what happens here. He's not playing anything. Let's play Valakut. We're not under an enormous amount of pressure right now. We've been milled one time. I think we can build some, a little bit more board state. Um, and this guy's taking forever. Yeah, he's going to hit Evolving Wilds. Uh, personal opinion here, maybe unpopular opinion, it's really annoying when you hit your when, when you hit your Fabled Passage or your Wilds at a time that you don't need them just to kind of take up time. It's not cool, man. It's not cool. Let's see what we got here. So he's got an instant in his hand because he's not passing fast enough. Um, let's go Calamity Bear. I would have liked to bring out Brigid, but I'd rather start pushing board stay right now. We might have a Essence Scatter, but we have a lot of other options to, to build up. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so he's going to let it go. He might have something like, uh, okay, so he's going to flash in. So Quakebringer, that is the other thing that we have a mill tech here. It's going to do four damage to him uh, unless he kills that. So 
because it's a giant and it's in the graveyard. So, and if we can bring out this Quakebringer next turn, it'll do eight damage. So yeah, he is gonna heartless act. And I thought he might have a heartless act, but them's the breaks. Uh, we need to take out this soaring thought thief right now. So that's what we're gonna do. Who do we want to put back? Decline. Soaring Thought Thief is probably the fastest miller. Um, so, because he's attacking with multiple um, rogues a turn, it's going to be two for every rogue. So we kind of want to take it easy on that. There's Fire Emancipation, so I'm going to bring out, because um, I kind of want to play Squash, um, I'm going to bring out Shatter Skull and Squash. Maybe he's got a Counterspell. He might have Drawn on the Lock. They usually do. Um... He is playing really slow, which already makes me want to scoop. He's got some sort of instant. He keeps delaying things here. So there's Throwing Thought Thief. back to my hand boom all right unfortunately he will not trigger quake bringer but i think i'm going to bring out quake bringer next um but we've neutralized a few of his rogues so he's just going to draw cards this turn Agadims, he brought it in untapped. He brought it in tap, which means he took two da three damage. He's going to hit me for two and mill me just a bit. Um, and he's going to go extra slow. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Still going to count to trigger. Might get counterspelled here. We have another one. Um, still have a decent amount of cards left for the mill. Uh, but he is just taking forever for everything that he does. Yeah, drown in the lock. is taking forever. Oh my goodness. So he brought Luris to his hand. He's going to attack me for two, mill me for two. Uh, he might have enough for more removal. I mean for more, uh, whatchamacallit. Does he have another drawn on the lock? Now 
No, he's just being a prick. He's gonna let it down. He probably has a flash card and not even a drone on the lock. Um, but he is just going so slow. So even if he plays removal on this, it's going to do three damage to him, um, which I'm pretty happy about. He might not be able to read. I don't know. You you wonder with people playing Demir Rogues in uh, 2020, 2021 if they are able to read or what's going on with them. No, he's got uh, he's he's only got two and one heartless axe. So oh, so he's dominating three damage. Nice. good that's what I wanted if he would have just attacked with him he would have really had me over a barrel there heartless act okay so some more removal I'd love to get a mana so I can explore again. That would be great. And then I would have a little bit more flexibility. He's got plenty of... He might bring out Luris, so he's going to one-mind it. All right, so we're going to Quakebringer. And we're going to go next. Then we're gonna end. Might have another low mage's domination. Might have another removal. I don't know. He drew a bunch of cards, so he's got plenty in stock. Um, I kind of just want it to be over because he's taking so freaking long. Um, he's done plenty of removal already. Um. Into the story. He's going to draw four cards. Maybe that'll give him the removal he needs. I don't know. Um, that's a bit a bit strange. He has enough for removal. Still, he has a drown on the lock or another... Uh, Heartless act. He can. He's still got the mana for it. He's not gonna go for it. He's gonna mill. So I have Fire Giant's Fury, which probably means that I'm gonna win. So he's gonna take four damage here. So yeah, we have definitely have enough to win here. If he plays the counter spell, which I'm hoping to draw the counter spell out right now. Um, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. We drew the counter spell out. So then we play Fire Giant's Fury, which gives me Trample. So 
There's nothing you can do, guy. You're out of mana. Unless you're going to pull mana out of somewhere that I don't know. I'm going to go face, just to spite him. And he's going to salt rope me to spite. There we go. You get the idea, guy. Okay. So, slowest player in the world. Top tier Demir deck. Did we take down the exact top tier Demir deck? Chad is saying that this is the exact copy of the the top meta Demir deck. And we took it down, guys. So, um, very nice. Very nice. Some we spicy meatball. Um, slow player, but uh, you get outplayed sometimes. You gotta watch that trample. Um, you, you gotta watch that trample. He had a lot of removal, but um, removal is, is only as good as uh, as long as I stop running out of creatures, and I never stop running out of creatures. This is a little slow on mana, but I like it. Alright, Selesnya. Fire Giant's Fury, MVP, let me tell you. Uh, getting Trample out for these kind of decks is, is very handy. Um, and getting that ability to cast. So, we're gonna go... We're just going to smash. You just want to put damage down right now. Especially with a Selesnya. You know he's probably going to gain life. Okay. Put him at a negative... Um, put him at a negative... Uh, life position early on I think that you're in a better position going into oh this is an Abzan okay if he pulls out another card we already know what it is it's journey to the tree or so whatever that crazy deck is called um yep it's a rainbow migratory great horn alright so what are we going to do we're going to get rid of migratory great horn because we don't like him He wants to bring out more mana. I'm just going to shut down his ramp. Gem Razor. Uh, we're going to put that out. We are going to... We're going to pay three life. And we're going to get out Tectonic. So this is a four color currently. I think it's that world. A lot of times when you see Rainbow right now, Rainbow is running that uh, World Tree build or that God's build. Um, all right, it's just a weird. It's just a weird, Abzan abnormality deck. That's fun. All right, so. What do we want? Yeah, let's get up Brigid. Try to help ramp us. Oof. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know what it was. I'm just seeing a lot of... I'm just seeing every mana. So that's my automatic assumption, is when you're running Rainbow, you're usually going to run... Uh, usually going to run... Uh, trees or something. Or Tybalt. I don't know. But he's in bad shape right now. Um, he is in really bad shape. He just saw me, he did not read this card when he let it through, and he did not know, does not know why I have a million cards in my availability right now. He's like, what the fuck happened? That's what happens when you pay, when you get a meta deck and you play on autopilot. That's what happens sometimes. 
Nethroi, Apex of Death, very nice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put down uh, Valakut. Then we're going to trigger once. Then we're going to trigger twice. Then we're going to hit Slaying Fire. And then we're going to hit Stomp. And before he even has a chance, we just shut that down. We just shut that down. We just turn that off. We just go ahead and turn that off. You know what I mean? Just turn it off. Just just go ahead and turn it off. All right. Let's keep it going, guys. Very, very fun here. Uh, I think I could have probably gone on a six-win run if I didn't get um, if I didn't get smashed early on by that uh, other giant deck who just happened to luck out on exactly what he needed. But uh, pretty, pretty powerful here, guys. That's why I love Slaying Fire. And when you have all that variety with Brig It Out, every time that you, uh, every time that you start playing... Um, no thanks to your weird rainbow nonsense. <laughs> um, when you start, um, uh, when you start getting all those abilities with Brigid, you can just keep cascading spell after spell after spell after spell. Like it reduces, reducing the cost of burn spells by one mana is insanely powerful. Like. I can't I can't tell you how much that modifies because really the limit to how much how much burn you can throw out in any one time is limited to how much mana you can play and when you can just play basically unlimited mana um, I mean things just get out of control quick um, you know shock is free uh, okay so he did us a favor here by playing that uh, right now we will foretell quake bringer bring his cost down um, we can hit slang fire or shock depending on what he plays this is a Rakdos probably a Rakdos Ooh, non creature non land so he's gonna take one of these probably a slang fire if I had to imagine correctly The other good thing about Fortel is it puts it in a weird quasi-floating state where they can't see it and it can't be touched, can't be discarded or removed or anything. It's, it's kind of like in an invulnerable state, um, which is very nice. Um, so I'm going to wait. I would normally go face, but it's an instant. Uh, I would rather put down Quakebringer and then Torbran. There's Meyer Triton. Weird Rambo nonsense. Mycrox, how you doing, man? I see you there. Um, Bakawana Kunawa, I see you. I see you lurking. Crispy Supremo, Bro the Crow. Uh, how you doing, guys? Right, he is going to give him Trample for some reason, and Haste, he's going to send him in. Alright, very good. I'm going to, I don't really care, it's too damage. Um, we're going to put out Torbran. Okay, so I'm going to lose three life. Okay, we're going to do that. We are going to put down...
Ooh, he took Quakebringer from me. Uh, I am going to lose three life. All right, so unfortunately, we're going to have to kill Quakebringer. Um, should we kill Quakebringer? No, we should do this instead. Interesting build here. Um, Tegrid, I am going to lose three life. I think I can burn him out before that uh, he can he can really hurt me. Um, I'm going to lose three life. Okay, so we are going to go... And turn... So if I'm able to get any burn spell here, or a haste card, um, I'll be alright. He might hit me with Tegrid's Lantern again, I don't know. Uh, lose three life. Nope, that's not it. So I'm going to have to sacrifice a permanent. He's going to be down to two, which gives me a little bit of extra time to do something. Oh, I should have kept that to discard a card. Damn it. Oh, playing too quickly. Not thinking. Uh, sacrifice a non-land permanent. And he's just going to make me lose three life again. Damn it. Playing too quick, guys. Could have kept that card in my hand and discarded it, and I would have survived. Um, playing too quickly against Tagrid's Lantern. Uh... Tegra's Lantern is a very powerful card, by the way. All right, last game, guys. Let's get it in. That was completely my mistake. That was completely on me, folks. Uh, that was me not paying attention. Not thinking. I was just thinking, oh, I didn't get the card that I wanted. Let me just get this out of my hand. Yeah, speed kills. I got to focus. Um, I don't really like this hand. Too, many, too much Storm Wrath. I don't need all that. That's better. I think I need that much mana, honestly. I think I can draw it. Blossoming Sands, okay. Next. Perfect. I have plenty of removal, so I'm just going to go face right now. Another Selesnia. Plenty, plenty of removal. Mirror Shield, not going to do much. Uh, Smash Giant, going to get that extra red. i um, going to go face, because I have a lot of removal. Whatever he puts down is going to get squashed, so. And it's only going to cost one. Cub Warden, yeah, you're dead, bud. If I can get one mana, I'll be all right. If I get one mana, I'll be fine. He's going to take two damage if he does something to him. Hunting Liger. Uh, that's not it, but we can just do this. Yeah, that's what a handful of burn will do. So very powerful guys. Um, even in the current meta, I'm able to I'm able to swing a little pipe around. Um, one loss due to me being an idiot, 
and one loss to just random RNG. I think I probably, this, this definitely has potential. I don't want to say that it will, guarantee. But this current build has the potential, the potential to go six wins. It could do it, for sure. Uh, will it do it? Am I guaranteeing you that it will do it? Ooh, Glorious Protector, very good. Um, no. Could it? I definitely think it could. This has a lot, a lot of potential to put out a lot of pain uh, very quickly. Um, ooh, I spelled champion wrong. So do I recommend Big Red Wins? I definitely do. Very powerful. Um, yeah, no chance to breathe. Uh, no chance to breathe. And that's the kind of the idea. I know that the creatures are expensive, but when you're burning and burning and burning, they just don't get a chance to get their board state set up, and that's what you want to do. Uh, you just want to deny board state. So that's the idea. I think it's definitely got some. It's definitely got some legs. Um, one more win and I break even. I think I already am ahead. Uh, I think I got three wins to two losses. Um, I think I actually got four wins to two losses. Um, I'm not sure about that, McBash. We're going to have to check the replay. So I'm going to get started on putting this deck out and getting the video ready for you guys. So I'm going to leave it there. We are right at uh, um, we are right at the time that the video should be, and we will see you next time. Uh, I really enjoy this one. We're going to be back with something fun next time, maybe some Orzhov, uh, maybe some Mono Black. We'll see what's up. All right, guys. Uh, love you all, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.